Hi, welcome to second lecture in the series of 8051 programming and interfacing. In this particular video, we'll talk about internal architecture of 8051 microcontroller, RAM architecture, and the functioning of various other special function registers. So, if you recall uh, our previous video in which we talk about a uh, uh, brief introduction of 8051 microcontroller and we talked about uh, roughly what are the various component uh, which a microcontroller generally possess. So the microcontroller have RAM, ROM and various ports etc. So uh, if we talk about the internal architecture of the RAM so that may differ for uh, controller to controller but the core architecture remains same. So this is the internal architecture of the microcontroller. So if we go into deep, it has four ports and which are connected to the pins and, and each four ports contains several other works as well. Similarly, it has pins for connecting the crystal oscillator and internally oscillator circuit is there which provide timing, timing function to each of the subsystem present there. Then it, it has uh, some other uh, pins which are used for address latch enable, external circuit, reset circuit, etc. Similarly, it has pins for VCC and RS uh, ground. In internally, it has RAM and it has uh, main part is the ALU arithmetic and logical unit which performs several kind of operations like uh, addition, subtraction, division and logical operation like greater than, less than, etc. And all these sub uh, subsystems are connected to the data bus and the address bus. So this is the data bus. So each subsystem transfers the data on this data bus and that data goes to the specific system as well. Now the data which uh, uh, goes into the ALU can, can come from accumulator. So this is register A and this is register B. So register is also known as the accumulator. And second data which can also come to the ALU that could be either any temporary registers or that can either come from the register B. Similarly it has uh, RAM uh, which we will discuss in detail. Similarly, there are several other uh, special functions like program counter, data pointer, and uh, uh, power control, serial control, timer mode, timer control, and stack pointer, and the stacks as well. Similarly, one of the famous resources is the PSW program stress transfer. So these are some of the various uh, registers which have are different kind of functions and collectively they make 8051 microcontroller to run. So now we will go into the detail about one by one of these special function register starting from RAM. So as we know uh, this uh, 8051 microcontroller have uh, uh, RAM of 256 bytes. So this particular 256 byte of RAM is divided into two portion, lower 128 bytes and higher 128 bytes. So most of the times you have specified in, uh, uh, in other uh, books, uh, it is saying 128 byte of RAM. So specifically it is 256 and it is being divided into two separate parts. So this uh, lower 128 byte goes from address goes from 00 to 7FH. So it is for general purpose, that means you can use, uh, access the addresses of it uh, for any purpose of the program. While this particular higher 128 bytes of RAMs are used for a special function register. These are the same register which we just discussed like <coughs> this accumulator, register B, this stack pointer, P cone, S cone, all these are registers and they have a specific address and whose address are in this SFR that means uh, upper one to, uh, upper 128 byte of RAM. So all these functions, all these registers like program counter, data pointer, T mode, T cones uh, are available in uh, upper 128 byte. Similarly, it has ROM 
which we discussed over the program memory so some of the controller depending on the size or depending on the uh, company or manufacturing process they have different different kind of program memory so they have some of the program memory on chip and some of the extra memory can be connected externally so we discussed like 8051 microcontroller have 16 bit of ram a 16 bit of uh, address bus so if it is a 16 bit address bus that means total addresses which can be accessed from it is 2 to the power 16 and which roughly comes out to be 64 KB so total memory which can be connected to the 8051 microcontroller is 64 KB so it includes both on-chip RAM as well as external that means if as if we have 4 kilobyte of on chip ram then externally we can connect 60 maximum 60 kilobyte of external uh, memory to the 8051 microcontroller so uh, addresses goes from 0 0 0 0 0 0 so in 8 3 3 6 2 f f and f those these are the addresses range so the maximum memory which can be attached to any microcontroller that is defined by its address bus so uh, so this is the normal internal and external memory of the 8051 microcontroller so this external memory indicates on chip memory as well as the external memory which can be connected to the microcontroller and it also also termed as program memory or the data memory so program memory generally is uh, the memory where when we write assembly language program so whatever hex file is generated that particular code is written into the program memory now uh, this is the interesting uh, lower 128 byte of ram is very interesting uh, it needs to be discussed further so this is the architecture of the lower 128 byte ram so this lower 128 byte RAM of the 8051 microcontroller is further divided into subsections. That means uh, some uh, we can think from here. This is the 128 byte of RAM. So the starting address 00, 01, 02, 03. This is 00 address. This is 01 this is 10 or 02 this is 03 obviously in these are in hexadecimal and 04 to 07 so these are eight memory locations from 00 to 07 so lower this 128 byte it is further clubbed into eight, eight memory blocks chunks so these eight memories are known as a register bank that means RB and this lower from 00 to 07 are known as register bank 0 similarly the next location starts from 08 to 1 F 1 0 uh, wait a minute. 0 F 0 8 to 0 F these are another one eight eight memory locations and these eight group of these eight memory locations is known as register bank one and so on so similarly we have these four register banks register bank zero register bank one register bank two and register bank three and this each register bank has eight memory locations and all these eight memory locations are termed as r0 R1, R2, R3, and R7. Similarly, the register of this 08 is also known as R0. It can be designated as a similarity up to R7. So, this is the register 0 of register bank 0. So, if we want to access by programming this particular register or uh, this particular register of the memory that means 00 address so it will be as 
called as register 0 of register bank 0. Similarly, we want to access this particular memory location. So, this will be called as register 0 of register bank 1. Similarly, if we want to access the register 0 of register bank 2, that will be access of register 0 and will be called as register 0 of register bank 2. So, the addresses of register bank 2 goes from 1 0 to 1 7. Again, 8 locations and similarly 1 8 to 1 f. So, these are 8 8 bit locations and if you can do hexadecimal addition, then keep adding 8 into 8 and you will find the exactly the same. So, you can for addressing purpose how these addresses are defined, you can go through the lecture 1 in which we have discussed about the addressing. Similarly, now this uh, register 20 to 2f, this is 16 byte is known as bit address area. That means we can access, uh, if we let us start it. So, this 16 bytes, so each bit can be accessed individually by their number. So, this is 0, 1, 2 and each bit can be accessed separately of this one. And similarly, the other remaining uh, byte is general purpose area. Okay. So, total number of bits are here 120. 8 bit and its bits address because it is 120 addresses range from 00 to 7f and we will uh, learn in programming how to access a specific bit of this particular uh, uh, any specific bit of this bit addressable area now this is clear register 0 if we write register 0 this is also register 0 0 8 address is also register 0, 1 0 is register 0. So, uh, we need to think like how we will access a specific register bank and then a specific register of a, a specific register bank. So, now the next thing comes, this can be done uh, if you uh, saw this picture, this can be done any specific uh, register bank of the RAM can be accessed by from this PSW. So, this was up to the internal architecture of the RAM. Now, we will talk about uh, the functioning of the several uh, special function register. And starting from the first one, that is PSW. This PSW is known as the program status word. Program status word means whatever the program status depending on that a specific bit or also known as the flags will be set or reset so it has 8 bit register and these memory location goes from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so this is parity flag this is empty this is overflow flag this is RS0, this is RS1 and then this is F0 or the user defined and this is auxiliary carry and this is carry. So coming from one by one, this is the parity flag that means whether it is even parity or odd parity so this generally happens in the codes so if it is one that means uh, it has odd parity that means number of ones in any particular code are in odd numbers and one for odd parity and zero for even parity right then this is the overflow flag so, this particular bit is generally 0, but it becomes 1 whenever the uh, result of the sign number operation is too large. That means, if we are making any mathematical operation on two sign number and the higher order bit is overflow, that means it becomes borrow or something else, then this particular bit is set which is representing that as an overflow condition has occurred. Now, these two particular bits 
this rs0 and rs1 are used for setting the register bank remember we just discussed about the register bank of different kind so these particular bits are responsible to decide which register bank will be zero so if this is zero and zero that means register bank zero will be selected if this is zero one register bank one will be selected one zero register bank two will be selected so if we write r zero so that will be of register bank two uh, r zero will be selected if it is one one then register bank three will be selected then this is f0 f0 is available for user or user defined flag so this can be used for any general purpose then this is auxiliary carry so auxiliary carry uh, is set whenever uh, uh, there is a carry in nibbles so if you remember the if it is a 8 byte of data so this particular is known as bit single memory location and the combination of this 8 bit is known as 1 byte and combinations of 4 byte 4 bit is known as nibble this is nibble okay so about this object array when we do addition or subtraction operation so if there is any carry if there is any carry or any borrow then particular this auxiliary carry will be set or reset that means there is no uh, if uh, there is no carry this will be a reset if there is carry then it will be set and this is carry this carry is generated when uh, this carry flag is generated whenever we are doing addition or subtraction operation and carry is generated from this 8th bit of uh, the content that means if we are doing some addition or subtraction of operation of two 8 bit numbers and uh, a carry is being generated at them then this carry flag will be set so let's have a small example like uh, if we talk about uh, what will be the content of this PSW flag if we want and to access register bank 2 so if we want to so the question is what will be the content of this PSW if we want to access the register bank 2 so uh, it's simple uh, think about it so let's do for selecting this register bank 2 this needs to be uh, the content of this rs1 and this rs0 and all other content can be 0 this carry flag can be set or reset by user as well as a program as well so what, what is the content of this one is this is 10 0, 0 x 1 0 so it is an hexadecimal this 0x represent the hexadecimal number uh, or notation and this is the value so this is hexadecimal 10 will be the content so if we put this hexadecimal 10 into psw then register bank 2 will be selected of the uh, RAM locations of this RAM. So now moving forward, similarly, uh, when our controller is switched on, that means it is powered on. So by default, register all the content of uh, this PSW is zero. So by default, register bank uh, zero is selected uh, in that case. When uh, as soon as we connect the power. Now there are several other registers as well uh, in this and we will talk about it uh, them one by one. So one register is uh, 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 which is 
and very important register as well uh, that is this program counter so there are several functioning of these registers uh, so uh, one of the register whose working needs to be understand is the program counter it is also known as a pc so think about it this is the program memory and our program is written in the codes so these are the codes where all the program or are all the instructions are recorded in program memory and all this memory has some address like 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 obviously this is right in binary then 1 0 0 1 0 1 and so on so this program register program counter it uh, it is a 16 bit register it is a 16 bit register why because program counter uh, stores the address of the memory okay so the maximum address line uh, was a uh, 16 bit so the uh, length or the size of this program counter is also 16 bit now what does this program counter do this program counter stores the address of the next instruction to be fetched or executed by the computer so understand it like there is the instruction one instruction one and it is the instruction two at the next memory location so our computer currently is executing this instruction one now after that this instruction two needs to be executed so this program counter stores the address of the next instruction to be executed because how this computer work computer or the CPU stores the address from the program counter and then goes at that address fetch the interest instruction and execute it and perform the function uh, as per the instruction so there are several other cases in which program counter address needs to be changed so we'll talk about it later so right now you just need to understand like what does program counter do so program counter stores the next instruction to be fetched or to be executed by the CPU similarly now there is another uh, uh, special function register that is uh, DPTR uh, this DPTR is also known as the uh, data pointer so it is DP TR or the data pointer this data pointer is also a 16 bit address and it can be uh, separated in two parts dpl and dph so this is dpl and dph so what exactly data pointer denotes out of the program uh, we need to sometime we need to create uh, some lookup table so this lookup tables holds the address where the data uh, has been saved so the data can be saved within the 16 4 kilobyte of memory so this dptr uh, holds the address of the data which have been stored at any particular memory location so that is why it is also a, a 16 bit register and can be accessed by its two different name dpl and dph similarly one of the, the uh, famous operation of any microcontroller of any programming is the stack operation so we will also discuss the stack in further detail in upcoming uh, in upcoming videos but just consider here uh, stack means stack is a memory location where we can keep on adding the data uh, one by one and it works on last in first out the data which is put at the last that will first one to step out 
so this is the stack so our 8051 microcontroller don't have a separate stack this stack is also formed from the memory location so memory locations from starting from 08 to upwards can form a stack so starting uh, starting of the stack can be defined so this stack can go uh, anywhere within the uh, ram so this stack starts from uh, defined from the sp register this is known as the stack pointer so it defines from where our stack has been started so by default that means when we powered up this stack pointer address to 07 so the 07 address of the ram of the lower 8 bit of the ram is pointed by the stack pointer so how does this stack pointer the data inside goes into the stack and take out from the stack there are two operations push and pop and we will discuss so in this push operation we put the data in and in the pop operation we take back the data and how it is happening we'll discuss when we'll discuss about the instruction uh, about push and pop so in other words the stack pointer starts from 08 its starting address is 07 and keeps incrementing so the register bank 1 uh, if we talk about has been conflicting address with the stack as well in the case of this uh, 8051 uh, microcontroller similarly there are several other special function register like SCON it is known as the serial control so it is control the behavior of the serial communication operation T mode and T con these are the timer registers these registers are used to control the operations of the timer so timers means which keeps on counting uh, on a specific uh, clock cycle or machine cycle so these are two 16 uh, this uh, T mode and T con are two registers which are used to configure the timers and similarly TH0, TL0, TH1, TL1, TH2, TL3 are some of the registers in which our data can be put inside these timers like similarly we have IA interrupt enable register so this interrupt enable register is used uh, to enable or disable any specific instruction any specific interrupt as we have uh, I think five five or six internal interrupt in 8051 and two external interrupt and this external interrupt to 8051 are known, known as ext1 and ext2 and uh, or to which location those interrupts are located we'll discuss when we'll discuss about the pin diagram so let's wind up for the today uh, for this particular lecture so in this particular lecture we have discussed about internal architecture RAM and various function of the special function register so uh, two important points uh, need to be taken from here that is what is the function of program counter and how this specific register banks are selected out of the RAM so I hope you learn uh, some of the basics about this uh, internal architecture basics about this is a 5 and micro from this lecture so uh, in next lecture we'll talk about some of the addressing modes and machine cycles for the it's a micro microcontroller so that's it for this video thank you